Hi guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to discuss our top five driving tips to ensure that you hit it further and straighter than ever before. And make sure you wait to the end of the video because we've got a fantastic giveaway for every single one of you worth £90. Before we get into the video, if you like what you see, please press the subscribe button. Make sure you ring the bell icon so you get a new notification every time we release a new video. Okay, so this is really exciting for us today because we're going to share with you our top five driving tips that, like our members, you can take straight out onto the golf course. We're going to show you how to set up correctly, load into your backswing, stop chopping down with your driver, and finally create maximum speed and maximum distance. Okay, to maximize your efficiency with a driver, we need two basic things. The first one is we need speed. We need a lot of clubhead speed for driver. And the second one is we need to hit, ideally hit up on the golf ball. We can't do either of these things, Harry, mm. if we, unless we're setting up to the golf ball correctly. So you're a slightly better driver of the golf ball than me. I'm a definitely yeah. better iron player and a wedge player than you. But do you want to get set, show, the, show the guys and girls at home how to get, uh, get set up to a driver? Yeah, absolutely. So obviously when we're hitting an iron, what we want to do is we want to hit down on it. Really guarantees that ball and turf contact. And as Liam alluded to with the driver, ideally we would hit more upwards on the golf ball. Now the easiest way to change those things is changing your ball position. So with the iron, you would have the ball position much more in the middle of your stance. With the driver, we want to move that ball position forward. So we want to have that ball position more inside your left heel, which will really encourage that upwards attack angle. As well as that, we also want to increase the width of your stance. So the inside of your heel is going to be more inside the width of your shoulders, Whereas iron stance tends to be a little bit narrower than that. So then the difference is, and what the, what's the similarities, Harry? Despite you, people do, do think this is a, is, a, is a difference. Well, one thing which you don't want to do is you actually don't want to tilt your spine backwards with the driver. You said, and we see that quite a lot, people trying to tilt the spine back. But what we see with the irons and the drivers is actually the spine is 90 degrees to the ground on both. Perfect. And then in swing, obviously the swing is a, is a tilted circle, isn't it? So are we doing anything in difference in, the, in aiming? That's right. So... As Liam just said, because the club is working on this sort of tilted circle, when it is going upwards, which is what we're trying to achieve here, the club is also going to be traveling around to the left. So what you have to do is, as a result of those changes, you have to start aiming a little bit to the right. So when that club does start working that with upwards, it actually ends up working towards the target at the moment of truth, point of impact. You see that a lot on tour, don't you? Definitely, yeah. yeah. You see some of the best driving. players in the world aiming a little bit to the right. Um, it's not because they're trying to hit a draw, it's just simply because they're hitting up on it. Perfect. Do you want to give it a crack? Right, so I'm going to point my club where I want the ball to start, which is going to be at the target. Get my ball position forward. I'm going to aim my feet slightly to the right and then give it a whack. Pretty good. Yeah, feel good? Yeah. Nice. There you go. Upwards attack angle 2.5, but the ball went pretty much straight to the target. Brilliant. Awesome. Good shot. Okay, now we've got you set up correctly. We're going to teach you how to really load up on the backswing to create some real power. How do we do that, Liam? Yeah, so it's widely talked about, isn't it? Widely being the operative word. We want to try and create as wide a backswing as we can with the club head. So we want the club head to move on a really, really wide arc. And that's what we mean by a loaded backswing. What we see a lot of at tee boxes, these narrow, really narrow backswings, very arm dominant backswings. To create a wide one, we need a lot, need a lot, need a lot of turn though. Yeah, exactly. And that's what people lack a lot of. On the backswing here with Liam, you're going to notice he's got 45 degrees of torso turn. And then after that, he's then got a further 45 degrees of pelvic turn on the way back, resulting in 90 degrees of shoulder turn at the top of the swing and some real power, real opportunity on the downswing to hit it hard. How do we sequence that, Liam? Because that's super important. You can't just turn everything together, no. can you? We don't want everything just turning together. We do want to create a slight disassociation between the torso and the pelvis. So great drill for it. We want the club to, or the, we want the, the, uh, the torso to turn about 45 degrees by the time the club hits parallel with the ground. There's going to be minimal pelvic rotation. Then the pelvis rotation kicks in again about 45 degrees up into the top of my backswing. And you can see from here, I've got that magical 90 degrees of uh, of ribcage rotation, but I can feel slightly coiled. I can yeah. feel there's this power in there, there's a load in there. It looks really powerful, but let's see if it's powerful as my shot. Why don't you All give right. this one a whack? So, 286 to beat, right? 
Oh, it's a little bit healy. Sounded good though. Two eight one. Oh, nearly. Bit out of the right. Bit out to the right. Five yards behind. So now everyone's loading their backswing with regard to rotation. So we talk a little bit more about body angles and how they are orientated with the drive and a nine. Yeah, I mean, definitely. We're going to have some subtle differences between the angles of our body with an iron to encourage a downwards attack angle and the angles of our driver to encourage more of that upwards attack angle. Yeah. So let's specifically reference the spine here. Okay, and at setup, what we would have is a spine at 90 degrees with an iron. On the back swing, that would actually stay at 90 degrees all the way up to top of the swing and stay at 90 degrees early down swing, which is really going to encourage that downwards attack angle. We don't, want, we don't want that with driver though, do we? We want to hit, maximize distance, hit up on it. Exactly. So with the driver, we would have the same 90 degrees at set up with the spine, but on the back swing, we'd actually slightly tilt away from the golf ball and tilt even more away from the golf ball on the way down, which you can see is really going to encourage me to launch that thing high and hit it far. So give Absolutely. it a go. Give it a go, mate. Yeah, you've got 286 to beat. Two eight, six yours. To beat. I'm 281. I'll have another crack in a minute, but right, uh, you've got 286 to beat. I'm warmed up now. Give it 100 shots. So I'm going to try and orientate my spine in the correct position, try and maximize my distance. Oh, that was pretty good. Was it? Nice strike. 288. 288. Pretty good. So what, 288 to beat? Okay, you're loaded up on the backswing, really ready to use that power, but it doesn't translate into the golf shot. Why is that, Liam? What's the main reason? Well, this is, this is the X Factor, isn't it? It's not the TV program we, uh, you love watching on a Saturday evening. <laughs> um, the X Factor is basically the angle we've referenced previously in the, at 45 degree angle between the pelvis and the rib cage. Mm. Now that's the X Factor up to the top. What people tend to do is they undo all that great work, all moves together, people tend to try and chop across the golf ball. Mm. It's just not a very efficient. It's so not effectively, they decrease that angle. They decrease the X factor. Well, what do the tour pros do? What's the difference? Well, we increase it. So from here, when I say we, obviously I'm not a tour pro, but they do increase it. Up to the top of the back, so we've got this lovely 45 degree angle. The best players in the world will increase that 45 degree angle. And it's all to do with the right hip. Mm, yeah? Absolutely. Well, I mean, the, the, the hips, you know, they talk about the past, they're the real hub of the golf swing. What do the poor players do that loses all that angle there? Well, the poor players up to the top of the backswing, they've got all this great coil, all this great loading of the backswing, and they move the belt buckle and the upper trail leg together. Mm. This all moves together. All that great work's undone. Best players in the world, how they create all their power, it looks so easy, is they move their belt buckle far, far faster than the upper leg segment. Mm -hmm. And from there, it's going to create even more coil, even more X factor to create that maximum power. Exactly. As you did the first one, you got everything open. The club was crashing down, chopping down. Second one, nice and cool, lots of potential power. Let's see if it translates into your shots. You've got 288 to beat. 288 to beat. This is the big one. We're near the end of it now. Let's see if you've got the X factor. All right. I've got one type of X factor. Maybe not this one. That felt pretty good. Oh. 302. Winner, Beautiful. winner, chicken dinner. Okay, so we've now got you set up correctly. We've got you loading into the backswing. We've even got your transition with a great X Factor stretch, but that's not it. We need to focus on impact, the moment of truth. Harry, let's talk about, about impact. What do good players do and what do bad players do through impact? Well, what we tend to see with bad players is as they start their downswing, they keep their hands really high early. And then through, through impact, they actually work downwards, which is not what we want to say. That's the complete opposite to the tour pros. What the tour pros do is they get their arms really nice and low early, and then they're actually working upwards and slightly inwards through that from that point. We see that a lot, don't we? With the tour pros we see, we see that some of them have their hands at their lowest point, almost opposite the right thigh, way before impact. Exactly, and that really forms the basis for our drill here. We want you to feel like, as you start your downswing, that you get those hands really nice and low early, so they bottom out right around your right thigh, and from there you can allow them to work upwards and inwards through the point of impact. That's great, but we can cheat a little bit. I mean, it's quite important. That has to be done. That through inward movement of the hands has to be Ooh. done with the body and not the hands or arms themselves. Exactly. If you just do that motion with the hands and the arms, that dreaded chicken wing is going to come out. So you've really got to feel like they bottom out early. And then as you turn the body, that's what gets them coming up and in. That's great. Brilliant. Should I give this one a hit? Let's give it a hit. This is, this is the big one now. So we've got 
302 to beat, my one was. Just over 302, I think. So right. everything rides on this. Pride, we've even got a friendly pound on it. I'll give this one a bit extra. <laughs> Sounded good. Wasn't straight out of middle. 289, oh. bit ballooned up in the air. Great club and speed, but not quite as efficient as yours truly. Okay guys, really hope you enjoyed our video today on our top five driving tips. And now it's giveaway time. And we're offering each and every one of you a free online lesson. Yep, all you gotta do is subscribe to the channel, click on the link below to fill out the form in order to claim your prize.